Okay guys, so if we think of movement, we've obviously got forwards and backwards, we've got our left and our right, but we can also move on the diagonals, okay? So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing this forward quadrant, I guess the sort of 1.30 on a clock face position, okay? So getting off on the angle is always a great thing, okay? Because if I'm just going straight forward, straight backwards, I'm very easy to read, especially backwards. So how can I get off? to this quadrant, okay? Well, there's a few ways. And let's break it down into which foot would move there, okay? First thing, I can do what's called a cross step. Now, a cross step breaks one of the golden rules of boxing, which is generally we don't wanna cross our feet, okay? So when would we do it? Well, we would do it as a way of getting out the back door, we call it, if we're in trouble, Perhaps I've overcommitted on a shot. My weight is here, my opponent's here. I see an attack coming. I might use it as a way of getting out. That's one reason, okay? Another reason might be I might be faking and just using it as a way to create openings, okay? It is an effective move when done correctly, but let's explain what makes it correct. So firstly, when I step across, I want to be stepping next to my opponent's foot, okay? Why? Because if I do this at range, my knees are designed to buckle in this direction. So it doesn't have to be a particularly good shot and it will drop me, potentially, okay? So if my, part, if my opponent's foot is here, I want to be stepping next to it, why? Because that crowds them. The more space I give them, the more able they are to sit down on their punch. I want to crowd them and I want to give them a little bit of destabilization with my forearm on their hip. Why? When they try and punch, I just want to lean into their hip so they can't really sit down onto the shot if they are going to fire. So I take my foot across, I destabilize their hip, and then I pivot out. My opponent is now here and I'm able to counter punch. Lomachenko is obviously a brilliant uh, person to watch if you want to see this in action. He does it very often in a lot of his fights. Check it out, it looks beautiful when it happens and you're going to notice the way he makes it difficult for his opponent to attack. He gets out the back door and he uses that as a way. Obviously he's southpaw so he goes the other way, but it's the same thing it's just the other way around, okay? So that's the cross step. Remember, don't step at range. Make sure you're gaining ground, stepping into your opponent's space, making it difficult for them to hit. Destabilize the hip if you can, or sometimes we'll even grab around their waist and pull them out of the way. Because remember, footwork can be a way of setting up your punches or just creating more space. When we get to pivots, we're gonna discuss when we would do which, but just know you don't always have to stay in that punching range. Your footwork can be a great way of getting out. So sometimes I might spin them to create even more space if I don't wanna go straight back onto the offensive. If I throw just one of my aggressive steps, which we covered, we covered the aggressive steps as a way of moving forward because the net result of me doing two is that I end up going forwards. But if we break it down and just do one, if I do one split entry and I go off, as we've discussed, yes, I'm a southpaw, but I've got myself off onto this quadrant. I've got myself off onto this angle. I started in front of my opponent. I capitalized on an opening. I pivoted myself and now I've got a new angle on them and I might be able to better create openings than I could before. Particularly good if you are a switch hitter, if you're comfortable hitting on both sides. Just remember, angle your hips to get the maximum amount of power. That's gonna be 45 degrees. Make sure your chin is covered and then you can do whatever you wanna do after that. Another way is that shifting step, which again, we discussed doing it multiple times, net result is going forward. But if we do it one at a time, what you'll notice is I'm actually stepping into this quadrant. What I'm not doing is stepping directly to the front, because that would be good for punching someone over there, particularly if I'm doing a hook. What I wanna do is line myself up so that my power continues into my opponent. My opponent's in front of me, I step into this quadrant so that I can turn my hip, get that power and do the damage, okay? So, to uh, go back over how we can get into this quadrant, we can use our cross step, we can use our aggressive step, or we can use our shifting step that gets us into this quadrant. We are now gonna move ourselves exactly laterally. So if we're right-handed, we're gonna be moving ourselves off to the right. Let's break it down how we can do it. 
So the first one might be if we're just stalking, we might be stepping. We've discussed this before. It is stepping one foot, stepping the other foot, the equivalent amount. And it can be a way of just closing down that ring. If you wanna be drilling it with punches, if you wanna be um, throwing your straights, for example, you might step to your right with the jab, step your left foot, so you'd be moving your opposite feet. Likewise with the hook, you would step in and then step in, because I wouldn't want to be stepping right and then hooking right, okay? So if I'm gonna add punches while I'm moving, it's gonna be opposite hand to opposite foot. Whichever punch you choose to do, that's gonna be a good way of adding those hands and feet together. You can also slide off to the side. This might be, for example, I've done some work, I see an opening and I wanna take the body, okay? What you'll notice when I do it, I use gravity as my friend. The biggest mistake you can do in your boxing stance, we're gonna have a whole separate video on the boxing stance itself, but basically standing too upright when it comes to movement is a killer. For a start, you're making yourself a bigger uh, target, but also you're slowing yourself down a lot. Up is not what you want, down, particularly when you're moving, just use gravity. If I'm throwing a punch and I'm retracting, I can get myself off the line and able to attack much better if I just drop myself ever so slightly down that 45 degrees. Use your legs, pull yourself off the line. So when I want to side slide, my feet, like we discussed before, there's that broken glass and I'm brushing it out the way. One foot moves, other foot moves, we're sliding ourselves out the way we stay in our boxing stance and we're able to counter. Another way I can get off to this lateral line is with a pivot. Now we're gonna see, I can pivot from my back side or I can pivot from my front side. The front side pivot is great if I'm stuck on a rope, I might be able to get out of the way. If I wanted to add a punch, it might be a rear hand check hook where I'm stepping my foot into a pivoting position and hooking at the same time, dropping my weight down. I'm going off to the side, I'm hitting them. I can pivot from the back side, I can pivot from the front side. I can add the punch to make it a rear check. That has got me off onto this side lateral line. Another thing that will get me off onto this side lateral line, realistically, is that cross step follow through. That pretty much takes me lateral to my opponent. This one takes me into the diagonal quadrant that we discussed already. The follow through allows me to turn and face my opponent side on, okay? So if I wanted to move directly laterally, combining those two steps will get me there as well. Speaking of combining moves to get me off into that lateral position, we're gonna be combining two moves that we've done already, which was the stiff jab or the stepping with one foot, retracting that, stepping our rear foot off to the side and then reestablishing position, and that's called an L-step. Now, the L-step gets a terrible name. For me personally, it's, it's an effective tool to use. You're gonna see occasions where it doesn't work. You're gonna see a lot of occasions where it does work. To me, the important thing with an L-step is where you do it. If you do it in range, I consider it especially dangerous. Why? Because there is a point where your feet are almost stacked, where you're very vulnerable and your balance can be compromised. However, if we did it before where we said, I'm out of range, I'm stepping into range on that attack and I'm pulling myself back out of range and it's only when I'm back in my guard do I step back in range, I feel it's fine, okay? And you'll notice what I've done is I've taken myself off to the side. The way we drill this is with an agility ladder, we step in, we step out, and we step back into the next rung. And you're gonna see that you're moving directly laterally, okay? Boxing, in an ideal world, our big toe will point at our opponent's belly button. And round one is gonna be a lot of like trying to get yourself in a position where yours is and theirs is facing the other way. They're at a disadvantage and you can capitalize on that. The L step is a good way of setting that up, okay? Because if they're slow, to catch up, you can catch them with that counter, okay? So the L step is another way that we can move off to the side. Just make sure when you do it, you're out of range, you can step into range, step back out of range, and then go. The biggest mistake I find when people do the L step is they make it a lowercase L, so they just go straight forward and back, or they turn their chest too much and go, you wanna be indecisive. Your upper body doesn't want to go anywhere. Your lower legs, do. your lower body does the work. So you jab, your chest stays where it is, and that allows you to move offside in your boxing stance. Another way I can move off to the side is if I've overcommitted on a shot. 
I can roll and move. So this is almost that pivoting footwork. I'm just taking my head with me. So for example, if I throw a hard right hand and my weight is on my leg, I've connected. We know when we connect, often we punch through our opponent. They might be swinging a left hook at me. What I wanna do is step myself into where I want to be, which is off to the side, and pull myself out, okay? That's a roll and move. I hit, roll, and move. Or it could be off a hook, bang! I re-establish my balance. And if you notice, I started here, and I finished here, the way I got there was by rolling my head, stepping where I wanna be, pulling myself out. That's another way I can move off to the side. Another way I can move to the side is the good old Tyson shuffle, okay? This is a dynamic move, and what it involves doing, it's a two-part process. Imagine you're going tick, tock, and then you're hitting your opponent, okay? So if they're shelling up, it's very hard to hit them straight down the middle. So what we can do is pin their arm when we move our head off the line. We then pin their arm again. So they're open down the middle now. I've taken myself off the side and I've got all that extra range. Rather than if I wanted to hit them, I might just be here. I'm allowing myself to wind up, move off to the side and really do some damage, okay? So again, what I've done is I've stepped my right heel down. My chest is facing the floor. I then make sure I shuffle myself off to the side so that I've created an opening. I don't want to be doing this directly in front of my opponent, and then I hit them. The biggest mistake when people do this is they step and twist. The problem with stepping and twisting is I haven't moved, I'm directly in front of my opponent, and they're gonna hit me. What I want to do is step and shuffle, and then I can hit them, okay? And as we're gonna see, we can be doing this from side to side, and it's a great way of getting control of your balance, but we'll cover this side in a moment. The dynamic pivot is another way we can get off to this side. The dynamic, dynamic pivot is, if we imagine there were four squares on the floor, where my front foot is, is square one, next to that is square two, behind that is square three, and where my right foot is square four. What I want to be doing is, I start in one and four, I wanna end in two and three. So I might do this off a hook. As my hand is coming back, I move off to the side. Why would I want to do this? Why would I wanna move my hips both at the same time? I would wanna do this if I'm stuck against a rope. If I'm stuck against a rope, I can waste so much energy pushing into my opponent rather than being the matador, pulling myself out the way and hitting them. So they're trying to force me. I pull myself out of the way rather than pushing, do that dynamic pivot and create an opening straight down the middle. If they're leaning on me, I take myself out, punch them straight down the middle, I've got control of them, okay? So that's another way of getting off to the side is that dynamic pivot. So just to recap those guys, if we wanna be moving to the side, we can step to the side, we can shuffle to the side, we can pivot to the side, we can follow through with our cross step to get to the side. We can overcommit on a shot, roll into position. We can do our Tyson shuffle to get off to the side. We can do our dynamic pivot to get off to the side. And we can do our L step to get off to the side. Those are the ways we can move towards our right hand side. We're gonna be moving to our left now. So if we're moving to our lead hand side, as always with all the pure directions, we can step if we want to. So I would step my front foot and my back foot would follow. Again, that might be when I'm stalking my opponent or if I'm just looking to see if there's an opening, I might move one foot, give them a little bit of a fake and then go. So I can step off to the side, moving one foot at a time. I can make that into a shuffle by moving almost both feet. We use gravity to help us. So if I went off a left hook, for example, I might slide off the line and then switch level and go down to the body. It's a good way of crossing that distance quicker. Okay, so rather than step, step, I'm there in one, I'm able to be in my guard and be able to throw my punches. I can also backside pivot. The advantage of this side pivot is that I can see my opponent the whole time. The biggest mistake when people do this is they over pivot. They end up being in a position where they couldn't throw a right hand if they wanted to. It's a small pizza slice. That's how much you want to turn. You want to create the opening and exploit it. If you throw your rear hand shot and you make connection, very often you can just pivot off the line and then throw. 
that wouldn't be true if you threw a front hand shot. If I throw a front hand shot and I want to pivot, I'm usually going to end up eating a shot. So what I might do is my next way of getting off this line is the slip pivot, okay? So I can either pivot or I can slip my head off the line and pivot. Both of those could add a punch and that makes it a check hook. So if I pivot and punch, or if I slip, pivot and punch, that's a check hook or a slip check. When we do both of those, it's just the pivot, lifting your elbow at the same time, and that makes it a check hook. You wanna make impact as you're going. So your opponent is coming where they think you are, boom, and you make connection. Those are your regular pivots and regular check hooks. There's also a Cuban step which allows you to get there where you move your front foot. You might see this recently with Canelo. He does it beautifully where a right hand's coming and he just does that Cuban step to get out the way. We can add a hook into that and make it a Cuban hook. That Cuban check is um, what Mayweather used against Hatton. He was backing himself up, gave Hatton a false sense of security, bang, and he hit him as he came in. It was a beautiful shot. You'll notice when you do that, because generally their shoulder is here, the hook is going to adapt and you're almost going to end up punching down when you do that one because you want to get over their shoulder as they come in. But with that, all we do is we take our foot, we face it in this direction and we keep our chest up. I want to make it a big step to avoid the shot. If I do a little step, I'm probably still going to eat the punch. Big step allows me to get out of the way. Big set with a hook allows me to hit them as they're coming in. Front loading my uh, lead leg, we've done with our slip pivot. It's worth noting that any defense that gets me there allows me to do it. So if I overcommit on a hook, I might slip and roll out the way too. So I can slip my head and move. My head will end up ultimately in that same position at the end of a roll for the roll pivot. I can recover from a punch doing that same thing. We discussed that Tyson shuffle. Off to this side where we pin. We can also do it in the other direction. We move our head and our foot. We shuffle the other way and then we punch. If I really do want to pin them on this side, sometimes what I'll do is I'll almost shuffle forward. Because if I go off to this side, there is a tendency where I'm going to switch stance. We're going to cover switching stances in a separate video. But just know if I go directly linear here, I end up southpaw. So what I can do is that a hip rotation and it allows me to stay as a right-handed fighter. When we went the other way, we discussed the dynamic pivot is a good way of if you're stuck against a rope. That's true. Remember, we've got the four squares on the floor. One, two, behind me is three and four. My feet start in one and four. And when they finish, they're in two and three. Think of throwing a right hook and as your hand comes back, you're just in your boxing stance facing that way. So if I'm facing to the side, when I finish this, I'm gonna be in my boxing stance facing you and able to counter back. That is the dynamic pivot where you move both feet at the same time. Hey guys, and with regards to the diagonals on this side, you've probably seen that some of the steps take you on a pure line, some of them take you on a more angled line, and it's very much open how far you wanna take those steps. Generally speaking, we've covered them on this line. When we go on this line, that would be the same thing for a southpaw person. A southpaw person would use the 130 and 430 uh, variations. They would be their uh, go-tos going on the other side. But all of the sideways movements we've done can be kind of adapted and changed to exploit those angles. I really hope that's been helpful, guys. Please do let me know if there's any questions, any queries, anything you want covered in further detail, anything you think I've missed, anything at all. Um, again, thank you so much for all the support. Please keep watching. Let me know anything that you want covered in future. And I'll see you guys again soon in Sweet Science with Streets. Take care, guys.